I wouldn't change anything per se. Um, I think what I went through is exactly what I needed to go through in order to get me to where I am. So for example, coming out of college, I did not know exactly what I wanted to do and went down a completely different career path for four to five years, had some really, really great experience, but ended up doing switching to recruiting, which com was completely different. So today I have Jordan with us, who is all about connecting talent to opportunity. She is an expert re recruiter and a process enthusiast who makes sure that when she is working with candidates from different parts of the U.S., she makes sure that the process is streamlined, efficient, to make sure that the candidates don't have to wait too long and ensuring that the process is highly efficient. Let's welcome Jordan on 10 Minutes of Hiring Wisdom, where she will tell us what what it's like to be a process enthusiast, what are some of the things that she's deployed in companies that have made the processes, hiring processes much more simpler. Hi Jordan, how are you doing today? Hello, I'm good. How are you? I am doing well. So Jordan, let's get into it. Why are you so yeah. much about the processes that goes within the organization? Process, yeah, it's um sort of nerdy almost, but I guess just through my time at different companies, whether it be big or small, you start to realize there's always room for improvement and just making sure you're really operating at the best and most efficient level that you can. So I really started getting into it probably, I don't know, the last five years or so. And I think also if you make it known that that interests you, people are generally very open to having you jump on board, whether it be a project, um, you know, being a subject matter expert for your area of the business, helping with like systems implementations, that kind of thing. So um, I've really gotten into that um, along with, of course, my, my, my day job of recruiting. Um, but you can kind of marry the two, especially if that's of interest. So yeah, okay. I've, I've felt lucky. I don't think that's an early answer. I mean, that definitely does make sense. But a follow up question for that would be is a lot of companies, Jordan, um, when they start growing, um, they usually have set rules, set processes. So how does one go in with a perspective um, being like, oh, these are some of the efficiencies or things that I would like to change in order to produce X, Y, Z. So how does one approach especially with people who have been with the company for so long, who might not be as open to change as someone who comes in with a new perspective? Yeah, that's a very good question. And definitely um, a, a obstacle you could encounter and that I've encountered. I think the important thing is to ask questions. So come in and say, oh, okay, curious to why, you know, you guys have been doing it this way. Do you feel like it's working well? Where do you feel like it could work better? So just gathering information before you really jump the gun and say, like, be accusatory or, you know, you could be doing it this way or because a lot of times there are nuances that you may not understand about the business or the specific way that company operates. So I think just asking questions, really gathering information, then from there being very mindful of how you approach it and communicate kind of what your suggestions might be. Um, also just creating those relationships with the right stakeholders so that you get in the ear of the correct people, you know, that can actually move something forward. Um, I think it's just important how you kind of approach it from a, you know, respect perspective too. Yeah, I think that makes sense because I think some people get excited where they're like, oh my God, I saw this work in company A, I should implement then company B. And I think a lot of people from older generations like to have that data-centered approach where you can come up with them and be like, X produces a certain amount of output, this is why we should implement this, which makes sense because it helps to visualize and put things in much more perspective. So thank you for sharing that, Jordan. Jordan, I'd like to love understand um you had a wonderful career what is the one thing what was a hard lesson that you learned in your career that you wished someone would have told you but it made you into the person that you are today oh my gosh that's a good one I could probably come up with a few but um I'm trying to think I mean um I wouldn't change anything per se um I think what I went through is exactly what I needed to go through in order to get me to where I am. So 
For example, coming out of college, I did not know exactly what I wanted to do and went down a completely different career path for four to five years, had some really, really great experience, but ended up doing switching to recruiting, which com- was completely different. But I also was able to, I think, parlay some of that experience into recruiting. So when I would go through interviews, you know, I could bring up like, I know, you know, this industry was different, but I still was acting as a liaison between the customer and the, um, you know, whatever other stakeholder. And you realize how much of it is applicable to a variety of different roles. So I think that was actually really part of like my learning journey and kind of what made me a stronger recruiter in a way. Um, I think the other really tough thing I've gone through and so many people have gone through in the past, you know, handful of years is being laid off um, at the beginning of the pandemic. And something that I think the only reason I was able to get through it and come out on the other side in a good position was because of my network and just making sure that you kind of foster that that network. Like you never know when um, you might encounter someone else that you know through a connection or so just really trying to be, um, keep those connections alive because they could be the ones getting you your next job. And so I definitely learned that that was super important and we'll always continue to do that. So I think you touched upon two important things, one of them being transferable skills. You came from a different industry, but you decided to use your knowledge into recruitment and you were like, okay, I mean, I might not have a lot of experience in recruitment, but because I have XYZ from my previous job, I should use this as a way that would benefit me. And it worked for you because you were able to put your put yourself into the shoes, um, into the shoes of the candidates that you were speaking with and created a relationship that helped them get their job that they really wanted so thank you for sharing that and the second part was that you was very interesting which was nourishing your network I think a lot of us usually think that okay we might just meet someone speak with them once and it's done and dusted but life's a full circle the world's very small even if we think it's very big one day someday meet someone again and you'll be like oh I've spoken with you and if there's a connection that's already there that's based on a good amount of trust a good amount of um, positivity you are more likely to get a chance of working with them if you ask so thank you so much for sharing that Jordan Jordan my next question for you would be is um, you're a lot about coaching and mentoring so what is one piece of advice that you usually give to people who come up to you for advice especially during the, this market where a lot of people a lot of companies are laying off candidates Yeah. Well, I would, I don't want to like talk about this too, too much, but again, back to the whole network, I think um, whether it be you want to grow internally within your company, networking is, is as important, if not more important, you know, building connections outside of your immediate team again, because you might, you, you might not know that like they know the head of your department, whatever it may be, it does come full circle. And I think just like fostering those relationships, um, doing anything you can do to kind of like differentiate yourself, set yourself apart from the rest of the crowd, whether it may be like taking a course or continuing um, education in a certain area that will kind of help your career. All of that, I think, um, I would recommend just anything that can make you kind of stand out. It's tough. Like, you know, this market and a lot of highly qualified people, you really have to like go the extra mile to get noticed. No, I think that makes sense because at the end of the day, you're just a number when you're just applying through easy apply on LinkedIn. But when you leave a good impression on someone where there's a connection already, they might know you, you could get a referral, they might put in a good word for you, and that could go way beyond your expectations. So thank you for sharing that, Jordan. Last question, Jordan, which is, um, where do you currently work? And if the company that you work with is hiring, if you could touch upon some of the positions, so if people are looking for jobs, they know what to and where to apply for. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I work at a company called Veeam Software. Um, we are very global. We are hiring Um, I just checked the job board today. There were about 30 open roles in the U.S. Um, I kind of cover the main corporate function. So marketing, um, 
finance, any of that kind of stuff. So I don't cover all the tech roles or the sales. Um, so I can't speak to all of them, but definitely would check check out the job page. We're, we're definitely hiring. The company is healthy and growing. Um, and we're a data protection software company. So something that we'll all need and that is at uh, high demand, I think, more than ever right now. So absolutely a good place to check for job openings. I think it's, it's, it's some funny that you mentioned something right now because there was a lot of hospitals, emergency rooms that were recently shut off because there were cyber attacks on their data. So I think there's definitely need a lot of companies that are working towards and making the safer place. So thank you so much for sharing that, Jordan. But Jordan, it was a pleasure speaking about you, learning from about your journey, how you use transferable skills across your industry, how you're so passionate about helping people, but more importantly, how you're all about nourishing your network because it's very important to create those human interactions because, I mean, people say that AI is going to take over the world, but that human need relationships that you form specifically, the connection that you have with people is here to stay. And if you can connect, create those connections, you are likely to go far. So thank you so much for coming on. Absolutely. Thank you so much.